There's always a bit of magic smoke anxiety when you plug a battery into your quad and power it out for the first time. Is it just going to go up in a puff of smoke or will it just work? In the past we've used smoke stoppers and bench power supplies to limit the risks, but now there's another option. This is the Short Saver Smart Smoke Stopper from Vifly, and this is the Whirly Bloke Channel. Now, it doesn't really matter whether you've built your own quad or your latest ready-to-fly quad has just been delivered. Plugging a battery in for the first time, it can be a bit stressful. Sure, you can use a multimeter to check there's no shorts across the battery connector, but that doesn't really tell you the whole story. There could be any number of wiring or component faults just waiting to ruin your day. You could use a current limiting bench power supply mat, and I did a whole video on this last year. Or if you don't have one, build yourself a smoke stopper. And that's just a couple of XT60 connectors and a car bulb that acts as a current limiter. If there's a short circuit or a wiring problem on the quad, the bulb very quickly limits the current and converts all that power into heat and light. Yeah, basically the bulb comes on. And this was devised about five years ago on the RC Groups Forum, and you'll find loads of YouTube videos about it. And as the original designer said, trying to do the same thing with resettable or polyfuses just doesn't work. They really don't respond fast enough to be 100% reliable. But now, Vifly have come up with this E-Fuse. It's an electronic smoke stopper that they branded the Short, Sa <laughs> the Short Saver Smart Smoke Stopper. I'm having trouble with my worms. It's designed to give complete protection against short circuits and overcurrents. It's spec to respond to short circuits in three milliseconds and overcurrents in 10 milliseconds. And when it trips, there's no leakage voltage or current until it's disconnected. So it's just like a switch, really. So let's give this a try. So this is a fully charged 4S battery. You basically plug it in and wait for it to power up. And you can power this off 2S right up to 6S. And very conveniently, it's got XT60 and XT30 connectors, so it'll be good for your whoops and toothpicks as well. So when the green light comes on, that means it's good to go. And this defaults to one amp current limit, but you can use this little switch on the side here to change that to two amps. And when the blue LED's on, that means it's on two amps. Now, these input and output connectors are interconnected, so you can happily use the XT60 for the battery and the XT30 to power a whoop, for example, and vice versa. Right, now I'm going to put my brave pants on and just short this battery out. Ready, steady, nothing. <laughs> no drama, it just works. And this red LED on here tells you there's been a short or an overcurrent. And to reset it, you just unplug the battery. Ooh, if I could unplug that. Plug it in again, and it's ready to go. And it's important that you plug the battery in first because it gives time for the circuitry on here to actually get fired up. So let's try and do the same short, but with a multimeter this time, just to see if we can see what sort of current. And I've got my meter set to current, and we're on current on the terminals. So let's have a look. Three, two, one. Well, <laughs> no drama yet again. And I think that flashed up to 15 milliamps, something like that. But this meter isn't fast enough to measure anything like that accurately. But I was just interested to see. Let's try it with a couple of quads. So I've got my tie can here. We're powered up and ready to go. Let's just plug this in. That's worked just fine. Very good. Let's try something a bit bigger. So I've now got my Crocodile 7, which I know takes more current, and I've got this plugged into a 6S lithium iron pack. 
Let's try plugging that in. There we are. <laughs> That's actually done an overcurrent. So I know there's no problems with this quad, so let's just try resetting this. I think this is the case where we need to switch this to two amps. Because on startup, this Crocodile 7 I know takes a big peak of current. So switch that up to two amps. There we go, the blue LED is on. Plug it in. <laughs> that's perfect. So that's why they put this switch in here, so that when you're on 6S particularly, I think, and you've got a quad that's going to just take more of a peak current when it fires up, you can increase the current limit that it cuts out at. So how is this different from polyfuses or resettable fuses? Well, looking at the PCB, there's a whole load of low value resistors down here in parallel, which is probably for current sensing. There's some sort of processor up here and a bunch of other components that will be monitoring the supply. And if it detects a problem with the supply, it looks like this FET down here will disconnect the input and the output very quickly. Well, that's my guess anyway. And that responds much faster than a polyfuse. And it does seem to work really well. I've been playing with it for a few days without any issues. And there's a couple of pads on the flip side of the PCB down here that you can use to change the response time of the board. By default, it's three milliseconds, but you can make it five or seven with different combinations of shorts on these pads here. And you get this small manual with it. It's not much in here, just tells you the specs and how the LEDs work. To be honest, it's so simple to use, you don't really need this. So, how much is it? Well, it's surprisingly cheap, at around $12 or £10. And if you think about it, a smoke stopper is probably going to cost you maybe half of that for a couple of XT connectors, some wire and a car bulb, and of course your time to build it. So I think it's pretty good value for money, because it does a whole lot more. I'll leave some links in the description so you can check out the latest prices and where you can get hold of this. Now, I really like this. It's one of those simple but incredibly useful products that comes along every so often. And it's not going to break the bank. As always, thanks for watching. And if you found that useful, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. And if it's your first visit, then please do the subscribey belly thing up here to get notified when I post new content. I'll see you next time.